Let's explore that problem or try to solve that problem from the last video where I added a video to two playlists, but in the end the video ended up only being in one of those playlists. The entity framework, uh, the way our schema is set up right now, the entity framework says, hey, a video could only belong to one playlist. And even though we tried to add it to both, uh, the, uh, the, uh, yeah, <laughs> the entity framework arbitrarily removed uh, that video from one of the playlists and so you can see the next viral hit is only in playlist ID 1 which is epicness uh, that's not what we want that's not what we want but first of all I want to want to beat into your brain or stress at least that the schema that the entity framework uses to set up these tables this, the right columns and what relationships exist and all that stuff that's called the schema the description the structure of the database inside of the the database the schema it is determined by the structure of our classes here. The Entity Framework kindly looks at our classes and with a whole bunch of reflection the Entity Framework realizes hey we need to set up some tables, we need to give them these these uh, column names, we need to set up a relationship because we have a relationship here and that sort of thing. And just by the way that we have our schema here, it looks like a playlist has several videos and at that point the Entity Framework assumes, we all know what happens when you assume things, the Entity Framework assumes that means one, oh, each video can only belong to one playlist and that's called a one-to-many relationship, one playlist to many videos. But what we actually want to support this scenario down here is a many-to-many -many relationship. We want many playlists and each playlist can have many videos and each video can belong to many playlists and some of them times that's represented by this infinity sign many to many is that right many to many relationship anyway uh, there's a few ways to set that up but just by using convention here we need to give the entity framework a little more knowledge about what we're trying to accomplish and there's a couple ways to do that uh... one I, I can go from a playlist to all the videos inside that playlist just by using this. That's what's called a navigation property. Give me a playlist and I'll s can search all the videos by using this, this property here. But there's no way if I have a video to say which playlist the video is in if I have a reference to a video instance. There's no property down here that allows me to navigate to which playlist that video is in. So we can certainly provide one. Public playlist. I'll call it my playlist or the playlist or whatever play. It doesn't doesn't matter. It just depends on what you want your column names to be named inside of your database. And even then, you can control some of that. I'll show you how later. But now I have a way to say, hey, this video. Uh, let me look at the playlist that that video belongs to. And now it makes sense that yeah, okay, each video can only belong to one playlist because right here you said you said that we we have a playlist this video belongs to, and there's I can only have one. This is not a list. A playlist. This is the playlist that the video belongs in. And you saw that if we didn't have this, just as we did in previous videos, the Entity Framework assumes that's the type of relationship we want. But if we want a many-to-many -many relationship, we actually have to add this property and say, hey, you know what? This video could have a list of playlists that it's in. And I can put a little S on the end here to make it plural and say, hey, this, this is my playlist. These are the playlists that I belong in. Okay, now let's go down here and go back to main. I left all this code the same as from the last video. I just create the context, delete the context, make two playlists, make one video, put that video in both playlists. We add it to both playlists. I don't have my save changes here, but I want to show you, I want to prove to you. In the last video, we saw that when we wrote line, right line, we, <laughs> we call two string on both of our playlists, and they report their title and the videos in there. We saw that the video belonged to only one of those playlists, not both of them, but now that we have been explicit about our intentions saying hey a video can have a list of playlists then the entity framework and all of its reflection intelligence uh, in all of its glory will will hey say hey you know what okay that makes sense whatever that video can belong in both playlists now you can see the next viral hit is in the entity framework playlist and the next viral hit is also in the epicness playlist if i go as far as saying db dot save changes Let's make sure we have our delete up here just to start fresh. Uh, Control F5. We'll see that that is reflected in our actual database schema and in the way that the tables are stored. So I'm going to bring this up. We're going to select and splat from video, select splat from playlist. But before I hit F5 and actually show you how the data has changed, 
Uh, pause the video and think about, okay, how, how should this schema for the tables change? How should the structure of the data change to support that many-to-many -many relationship? To support the one-to-many was easy. Each video just keeps track of which playlist is it is in, and this value has to be a subset of the values and the IDs of the playlists. But now we have this many-to-many -many relationship, so what's going to happen in that case? How to... How do we store that or track that in an actual database once we want to convert our objects to rows and tables? Pause the video. See if you can come up with something. I bet you didn't pause the video. I bet you're just sitting there watching these, but whatever. You're lost. I hope you are pausing the video. Uh, let me hit F5. You can see that our playlist ID column is gone, and there's no column added to either one of these tables. Uh, we, uh, we saw that situation with the null column. So. We could have a playlist, but we're not forced to have a playlist, and so they'd insert null into that column. So then how is that relationship established? I, I, I have a video here. Well, how do I know what playlist it's in? Or I have a playlist here. How do I know what videos uh, are in it? Watch this. I'm going to click here. I'm going to click refresh. Don't blink. Keep your eye right here on this part of the screen. Refresh. And you can see we have another table here. It's called video playlist. This is how we establish a many-to-many -many relationship using relational databases we have to add a third party table or another table that tracks which videos are in which playlist let me go as far as saying select splat come on splat 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 from video uh, playlist we're not getting IntelliSense support because we have master selected up here I'll just manually switch it over for video video playlist well maybe I was wrong <laughs> whatever show me the data in there Hit a five, uh, IntelliSense is freaking out, but we still get a result here. SQL's case insensitive, it doesn't matter. Hey, look at this, look at this. The way the scheme is set up is, okay, video ID one is in playlist ID one. So video ID one is in playlist ID one. That's kind of a roundabout way of getting there, but there you go, this, this video, share, the next file will hit share with your friends. Uh, it's it's in playlist ID one, and then the same thing again here. We have video ID one is also in playlist ID two. Okay, playlist ID. Oh, squeeze in here, nice and tight. ID two, and so now we can have many to many relationship by using this this mapping table, if you would. This it maps the video ID to the playlist ID. So now. We can have the video ID, it shows up multiple times. Remember we had that problem right here where I was trying to store, or we thought we should store two playlist ID in the same column, totally not legit. Instead what we do is, in this table, we're going to add a row for each relationship with the many to many. We have video ID one, it's in playlist ID one. And then again, video ID one, it's also in playlist two. So now we have a single value per cell and we're also tracking that many to many relationship. And furthermore, there's actually foreign keys to enforce this. If I come over here to video playlist and I say design, you see there's video ID, playlist ID, the combination of those two make the key for this table. They're both integers. We're not allowing any nulls because it wouldn't make sense to insert a value from one column but not the other or vice versa. You gotta have both values. If, if a video is not in a playlist, we just won't have a record for that relationship, which hopefully makes sense. I'm gonna right click here say relationships table and column specifications you can see we have two of them the first one says that the video playlists playlist ID if we insert a playlist ID into this video playlist mapping table then that ID better exist that playlist better exist in the playlist table which makes sense if we say a video belongs in a playlist that playlist better exist vice versa same thing video playlists our mapping table a special new table if we insert a video ID, that video ID better exist as well. Okay, which makes sense. That's that's a many-to-many -many relationship, which is nice. This this is kind of the the bridge or the go between this table right here. Keeps track of which video is in which playlist, and if a video is not in that playlist, we simply will not insert a record mapping that video to that playlist. So there you go. That's many-to-many -many relationships. The many-many -many relationship concept in SQL hopefully is. It's not new. If it is, again, you can check out my SQL, so the SQL programming playlist. Uh, but now you can see that we we have the many-to-many -many relationship. We had to be explicit about our intentions by having both the list here and the list here in both classes that we're mapping 
between, and then the NAD framework was smart enough to set up that mapping table for us.